Welcome everybody to our video, What is Electromagnetic Radiation, aka Light? So in this video I'm going to introduce you to this idea of electromagnetic radiation as both a wave and a particle. And I am not a physicist. This is really a video about remote sensing. And I want to start out then by asking a question. What causes color in this remotely sensed photograph, right? The reason you're seeing different colors in this photograph is that electromagnetic radiation, or light, that starts at the sun bounces off various landscape elements and comes back to your eye. Why isn't everything the same color then? Things aren't, are different colors because certain wavelengths of light reflect more readily from different types of material. So for example, the white snow on top of the mountain is reflecting all wavelengths and your eye is seeing that as the color white. Some of these green trees are preferentially reflecting green wavelengths of light and some of the red trees are preferentially reflect reflecting red and of course absorbing other wavelengths of light. So the colors you see are entirely dependent on the pattern of absorption and reflection of a given material of light. But in this video, we're going to start way back with the question, uh, what is light and where does it come from? So we use the idea of light or photon and electromagnetic radiation all interchangeably in this class. And where, did this, where does this come from? Where does EMR come from? It comes from oscillation of an electric charge back and forth. As you move a charge, say an electron, back and forth, as that charge moves through space, uh, it creates a corresponding magnetic field, and you end up with an electromagnetic wave that propagates out away from the moving charge. So for example, this could be a lot of different things. This could be uh, heating up your lunch in the microwave. This could be broadcasting a signal over an antenna. Or it could be the light sitting above you in your room. It's always electrons moving. Perhaps the best example actually is that our bodies themselves are made up of electrons that are constantly moving. And that's why our bodies are actually radiating uh, infrared radiation all the time. So even right now, you are radiating electromagnetic radiation. So one way to view EMR is as an electromagnetic wave. Okay, and so if we think of this in the wave model, um, it's a wave front that is traveling at the speed of light. So that's C. Um, and it has different properties. One property is the wavelength. That would be the distance between successive peaks, right? So here's a peak, here's a trough, and here's another peak. And we can also think of it as having a frequency. Frequency is the uh, number of wave peaks that are passing a given point per second, right? So you can have a higher frequency. Well, let's, let's just say if your wave is traveling at a constant speed of light, which they always are, um, Having a higher frequency would also mean you need to have a shorter wavelength to get those peaks closer together. This uh, figure also shows, interestingly, that an electromagnetic wave is thought of as having two perpendicular waves traveling in tandem. One is an electric wave and one is a magnetic wave that are always at uh, right angles to each other, 90 degrees to each other, due to the right-hand rule that you might learn about in physics. We're not going to concern ourselves with these wave properties in this class very much, although if we get into radar remote sensing, it might come back. So here is a compact formula that essentially captures what I just told you, right? Um, the speed of light C is equal to wavelength times frequency. And here you can see the units that we commonly use to describe those things. Okay, so we just talked about how EMR can be a wave. 
but the other view is of EMR as a particle. And when we speak about electromagnetic radiation as a particle, we usually use the word photons, which we think of as being quantized packets of light with unique energies. So uh, this, there's a deep and awesome history of physics here that I encourage you to go back and review. But uh, a number of observations support the idea that light is actually these quantized um, objects that are striking and can strike uh, the surface. And so we know that the energy of a photon is defined by its frequency. So where Q is energy, H is Planck's constant, and V is the frequency of the radiation. Okay, so that's the formula for energy of a photon. And again, what you're going to notice here is that uh, photons that have a higher frequency or a larger V have more energy, right? And that's going to correspond to a shorter wavelength. So we can actually combine uh, the wave model and the particle model mathematically just by using the equations I just showed you. So here is the first equation I showed you. If we multiply this by Planck's constant over Planck's constant, or h over h, then we substitute the uh, particle equation that I just showed you, q equals hv. So we're going to uh, sub that in for hv right here. That gives us this statement. And if we rearrange this, we can write uh, the energy of a photon as a function of its wavelength. So here we essentially combine the wave, particle, wave model and the particle model. And we directly get, and we directly show that uh, photons with a longer wavelength are lower energy, okay? Uh, and photons with a shorter wavelength are higher energy. They make Q bigger. So, you, so that's the math. Now let's step back and think of this more intuitively. This is kind of a, a great reference for electromagnetic radiation. It's a, it is the electromagnetic spectrum. So it shows all of the different wavelengths of radiation as well as their corresponding energy. So here's wavelength, here's energy, and here's frequency, okay? So just like we just established mathematically, uh, photons with the longer wavelengths, say 10 to the 7 meters, have the lowest energy, right? The shortest wavelengths, like X-rays or gamma rays, have the highest energies. And that's just so important. That's going to be important throughout this class. So it's important that you, you grasp that idea. You may or may not know this, but you're probably already familiar with these different types of electromagnetic radiation. And here they are up top. Gamma rays, X-rays, UV rays. Um, here we have the visible wavelengths. Here we have the infrared, or IR, wavelengths. Um, then we go up to microwave, radio, so on and so forth. So as we increase wavelength from left to right, we go from x-rays all the way up to radio waves. But those are all fundamentally types of electromagnetic radiation or even light. Um, and it's really important to emphasize here that your eyes only see in this visible spectrum. Okay, this is about 350 to 740 nanometers. So you may want to have that range in mind. Also known as 0 0.35 microns to 0 0.74 microns. But remote sensing imagery is commonly collected um, all the way from kind of, let's say, violet, so 350 nanometers, um, all the way up through this infrared range even up through long wave infrared, up to even 14 or 20 
microns. So that is the common wavelength for remote sensing, is basically this block in here. And you'll see here's near infrared, short wave infrared, medium wave, long wave infrared. So uh, you'll be coming across this quite a bit in this class, and this really is a great reference. I think I'm going to give it to you as a handout. Okay, so to wrap this up, um, let's recap a little bit here. So what we've just shown is that the energy per photon is determined by its wavelength, right? That's the energy that each photon imparts. But it's very important we don't confuse this with the intensity or brightness of, of, a, of a light source, um, which is determined by the rate of photons, okay? So, uh, and this, this makes sense. Think about, for example, a sunny day up on a snow field or a glacier. Um, it is incredibly bright because all of the wavelengths of light are being reflected to your eye. So the intensity or the rate of photons arriving at your eye is incredibly high. Same goes if you're driving at night and you're staring into some oncoming headlights. Bright headlights just are shooting more photons into your eye. So that would be higher intensity, okay? However, the energy per photon in this picture actually is highest here, probably in the blue, right? These are the shortest wavelength photons that would have the highest energy per photon. But the blue sky doesn't blind you because the intensity isn't that high. And so in this class, we'll often use intensity and brightness interchangeably. So those are good words to know. Okay, so in, in summary, electromagnetic radiation is created by movement of electric charge. It can be viewed as a wave or a particle. All photons travel at the same speed, which is the speed of light. Um, the energy per photon depends on its wavelength, or sometimes we would say frequency, which is the inverse of wavelength. And the intensity or brightness is controlled by the rate of photons. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great day.